See, when I write with rhythm guitar and with bass, I always make sure that I have another guitar that is playing just a single string like a danga danga like like drumming, but but it still have the the melody there. So I was the one that started that recording, you know, re re writing like that. So we write all the parts like that. That song go back a long way because uh, in the in 60s, late 60s, I wrote uh, Ashiko. And I would my I do re rehearse it with my band. I didn't record it, but what I did was to just to make a copy that I was you know writing the parts to and kept it so and it was after that I, I went to USA in 72 so when I came back there in 74 was uh, when uh, we formed a group called Imoja in uh, Washington DC one of the rehearsal we saw Imazikila came uh, somebody brought him to the rehearsal you know and he came in when he saw us, and I guess uh, one or two guys there has played with him before. So the guy just took his uh, fluga and started playing with us. That was the first time for me to meet Masikila. We end up uh, playing many gigs with him that landed us in Los Angeles. They say, please let us put it in the album. Can we do a collaboration together whereby, you know, you know, Hugh Masekela's songs and uh, and my song to be recorded as you go. I thought to the guy, say, well, <laughs> let's give it a try. And that's how we end up in a, you know, a very good studio in, in uh, LA. One day he called me and he said that uh, I, I need to come. So when I got to his office, so he gave me a cassette to listen to. He said, there's the guy in uh, Orlando, I know, I said, I don't know. He said, it's very, you know, somebody that is popular, but he, he wants to do something, a song called Going Back to My Root and, you know, but this is uh, the rehearsal you can hear him singing the song. So he gave it to me. So I went, I went and listened to it. Um, the music that he used was the Ashiko's uh, track. Because I know what I wrote. The tenor line, the bass, ding, 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 ding. And Adelaja on the keyboard, can't, 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 can't. I said, This is my music. It got to a place toward the end where they started playing percussion. And, and I know that Bill Summers was one of the guys that did the session, you know, because I, I, can, I can hear his, his work there. So, and I said to myself, Okay, this percussion they are playing, there's nothing, no, no song, nothing. We just said, da -ga -da -ga, you know, but they were doing it was right. So, and I said to Levin, I said, for me to make the percussion better, I have to bring my talking drum. I brought a big talking drum, not a small one. I brought it to the studio. And uh, our daddy, Ambrose Campbell, he's a talking drummer that played the small talking drum. His name is called Shamsi Sarumi. It's now back home. So, and I brought him to the session, and I brought two ladies, 
like Latoya, you know, they, they sing, you know, they are African American, but they sing well, very well. I brought them. So I was able to do my drumming and then sing Kawa O Manati, the chorus that I wrote. And now the chorus is Yoruba, which is my language called Kawa O Manati, Enanti Yeo Ishedale Baba Awa. We will always remember the root of our, our parents. I told Levy and said, okay, well, let's, I need to pay my guys. So he said, okay, let me do this, you know, come and see me again. Take this $2,000, $2,000, and I signed for it. He said, okay, come and see me again. So by the time I was going back to look for him, I was told that uh, Levin has uh, moved to uh, upstate in, in, in not uh, upstate uh, New York. So I now went to Nigeria to spend some time. So I was just going from diff different discotheque to different discotheque. And uh, each discotheque I got to, that's the song they are playing more than 10 times in the night. So, I told the DJ, I said, please, you have the album. I said, yes, let, let me see it. So, when I saw it, I look, I look, I read, you know, everything. That was where I found out that he was involved on the project, because they, they gave him credit. So that was him that gave, gave, gave them my music to use. And so I know him and Levin, and, you know, they, they, they work on that. So when I saw that, and I see what is Rad wrote uh, O.J. Ekemode translation. When I heard the Odyssey version, I don't even know who is Odyssey, because I don't know many of the co-DJ and uh, people that sing and all those things that time. Morning, afternoon, evening, they always come back and see this thing on TV, the, the classic of our time. And, and uh, one of those songs is uh, uh, going back to my roots. But when they are playing it, it sounds different to, I mean, it's the same, the same, uh, uh, the, the same uh, chorus that I wrote there was why they were sing, they were singing that the same chorus. And the same music too, but the way they did it is more more disco than what we did with uh, you know. California, before I left the States, and when I was going to leave the, the country, and I now met a couple of lawyers, you know, and I showed them, you know, and they said, ah, well, <laughs> I think if you write this, why would they not give you the credit that you deserve? You know, so I said, well, I may have to get a lawyer to help me plead. And each of the lawyers, when I talk to them later on, uh, when I go to them, they say it's a conflict of interest. And, and I say, oh, <laughs> it's, that's, that's, that's life. <laughs> so that's what happened. 